drama. Moving over to here, we have the beautiful, the premium, this product here. As you can see, starting off with this particular device, we have our progressive HP logo, which means you know it's premium. It looks fantastic. So with this guy here, it looks a bit ominous, kind of looks like most of our other devices, but there are some game changing things that are happening in our world. Have you all seen the news lately and what's happening with HP, specifically something that happened last month on the 23rd? I'm just gonna, just gonna pause. I'm hoping there's some hands up maybe, unsure. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, this wasn't well thought through. That's fine. Amazing, I'm gonna assume everyone is confused and looking at me like I have no idea what's going on. Thank you so much. But with this particular device on the 23rd, we actually launched the news of HP Omnibook X. And that my friends is this device here. Well, not specifically this one. This is actually a pre-production unit. We are that far ahead that we don't have the ones that are hitting shelves yet. So there are some key changes and differences with this one compared to what you'll see physically and I'll explain. So starting off with this guy, as mentioned, we've got our premium progressive logo that highlights that you know that this one's well worth spending the extra money on. We have a USB-A drop jaw here with a headphone jack. Moving on to the back here, of course, we have our premium call out, but you'll see here it actually says Envy. But the one that will be arriving into your stores is actually the Omnibook X. So this is the new branding conventions for Envy that will be coming out in a slow momentum. So please bear in mind the products that are currently hitting your stores from Envy, Spectre, Omen, they are all still very current. This is gonna work in conjunction and be a slow rollout. So moving on, premium branding as mentioned. On this side here, we have the USB-C ports and of course it is charge, it is data, and of course it is display. So you've got USB-A on this side, USB-C on this side, and an opportunity for add-ons such as your hubs or adapters. So you've got straight off the get-go, a really good package. So that is the shell, that is the outside. Just as a reminder though, because we are all about sustainability here at HP, this guy here does have recycled metals in the chassis and the physical design. But opening this guy up, we have, <gasps> well, bam. We have the Ocean Bound plastics and post-consumer recycled plastic plastics in the keyboard and around the bezel of the display. So I'm just gonna move this guy closer. As you can see here, again, looking at it from afar, it is actually hard to tell what the differences are, but I will celebrate a win really quickly. This guy here, we are bringing out a silver device and thankfully we are also bringing out with a dark gray keyboard, so it's actually accessible. So when that backlighting is on, you can still see those keys, which is a huge win for HP. I'm gonna pause really quickly for a round of applause. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm gonna assume you all clapped, otherwise I'm gonna look really silly right now. All right, so let's continue on with our momentum of what benefits do we have? So some key things that I'd like to talk to you about is the display. Now this guy here is a 2.2K IPS panel, but it is a clamshell device with touch screen. So please make sure that your customers are not pushing it all the way back like you would with an X360 because it will flat up be really unhappy. Pretty much, please, please don't do that. Thank you. So with that though, design wise, continuing on with our storytelling, we have our new logo here for Envy and AI, but as mentioned, this will be replaced with Omnibook. So new naming conventions, which is really, really cool. On this side here, we have Poly Studio called out, but Poly Studio has replaced Bang & Olufsen. And that again ties into our audio, so our hardware, as well as our AI audio features. I will talk about that shortly. Continuing on with my highlights from a hardware perspective, again, we have our co-pilot button. This is our second device to actually incorporate it, which I'm really excited about. But the key difference with this guy versus our Envy that has just launched, or our Spectre, for instance, with Core Ultra, this guy here is a Copilot Plus PC, which means it can be a localized or cloud-based AI PC, whereas our other devices with Core Ultra are cloud only. So my big challenge to you all right now is please make sure that these are going on display with Wi-Fi connected. Otherwise they will not work and your Copilot button will be completely redundant. This guy here, not so much. However, I do expect that Wi-Fi is connected for RDX and making sure that our demo is completely running as smooth as possible. So I'll leave that up to you guys. But just again, reminder, Copilot Plus can be local, 
Whereas our core ultra range currently not AIPC specific, they will need Wi-Fi to work. All right, so again, key highlights. As you can see, the keyboard is absolutely beautiful. Another huge win for a round of applause. Give me a second and let me tell you why. And that is because our power button is now in the far right hand corner instead of in the middle of the function keys. Can I get a round of applause for the HP designers on this one because they've just outdone themselves. Thank you so much, everybody. Can someone let me know after this if someone actually clapped? That'd be great, thank you. All right, so design-wise, we have a lot of really cool key highlights from our sustainability to our new initiatives with AI, Copilot Plus, our Poly Studio, our new button, our new button of power at the top right-hand corner, the fact that this is a clamshell device, a 2.2K IPS panel, but we also are bringing back something that went really, really well last year, and that is thanks to the NBX 360 13, we're bringing back the five megapixel webcam. And I wanna show you some really cool things that you can demonstrate when you're in store. So moving around to this side here, you're first gonna open up the camera. Now this camera has a few different settings. <laughs> Drama. So with this one here, what I would challenge you to do is split it. On one side, have the camera open. On the other side, you control shift escape. And I want you to open up task manager and showcase your NPU, your GPU, and of course your CPU. For customers that may not know, this is how you're going to be able to showcase that there is an NPU built into this device. This is what really gives it that uh, AI feature. Now, as you can see, it's starting to tick over. At the top right hand corner of the camera itself though, if you go into here and you turn off everything, what will happen is the MPU actually starts to go down because it's not utilizing any AI features. Therefore, there's not en no energy, there's nothing it needs to optimize. So everything goes to CPU and a little bit to GPU. But as we start to click on automatic framing, I'm not turning on eye contact, it creeps me out. But if I turn on that and maybe the background blur, you'll start to see the NPU kicking up again. This is something you can show to customers to basically really make AI PCs make sense, but more importantly, remove those scare tactics that people are freaking out about. So as mentioned, NPU, have this guy open, have your camera open. That is one really cool thing. And as mentioned, this is a five megapixel webcam, so it actually looks pretty good. Not that you can tell through this camera here, but I do recommend as a demo, have this up and running. Maybe even open it up next to the Spectre, which is a nine megapixel webcam. That'll help with a really easy upsell journey to Spectre as well. So. I'll leave that one up to your capable hands. Now, closing this guy up, I'm actually gonna close the camera and close this guy, and I'm gonna take you to settings. Now, there's a couple of things that you can do for this next really cool highlight from an AI perspective. You can either go to Copilot and search it, you can go to settings, or you can search it in the search bar. It depends on how AI initiatives you wanna push. But for me, I, let's just pretend I've already searched it. But there's a couple of settings that you can activate from an AI perspective to make these PCs work better for the customer or for you to be able to showcase as a demo in store. One of them though is this guy here. So there is wake my device when I approach. This is one key highlight. So you've got turn off my screen when I leave. Uh, this device is unfortunately an American device. So you'll see that it says feet instead of meters. Please don't judge me. This is all I could get my hands on. So for this one here, you can turn off the device after a certain amount of time of not being in front of it. It will utilize the camera, so please bear that in mind. So for the customers out there that are a little bit uh, concerned about their security and use band-aids to cover the camera, it's not gonna be very helpful. Um, but in this instance, let's just pretend as is, works perfectly fine. You can turn off the screen when you leave, you can wake the device when you approach, and you can also create an opportunity to, again, create a device that is more optimized for the user by clicking on dim my screen when I look away. Again, this is about optimizing battery life. So that I want you to remember. Flick these all on, this will utilize the NPU. So bear in mind, if you wanna showcase that, you're welcome to. All you gotta do is control shift escape and go to the services tab, open up all of the CPU, GPU, etc., and you can actually see them all ticking up and down depending on what it is that you've got open. All right, Ooh. now moving on from this, I'm just gonna switch these guys off. There we go. As mentioned, we do have Copilot as part and parcel of this, but please bear in mind, mine is a preview version. Please utilize this guy when it comes to stores. It will have the fully functioning version when it does arrive. Unfortunately, I got the pre-production unit. 
So, the device itself, this is the Omnibook X. Some key highlights that I think are well worth mentioning though are the minimum requirements to hit Copilot Plus. With this one specifically, it hits up to 45 tops with the minimum requirement at 40, which is huge. But as you can see here on the rotator, it has up to 26 hours. 26 hours of battery life with HP fast charge also as part of it, which is up to 50% of charge in 30 minutes. So as far as I'm concerned, this is going to be a fantastic machine for those that are on the go. It's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which means again, it's gonna be less wide, more long, fantastic English by me, thank you so much. Feel free to quote me with your customers. Uh, but I will admit Excel spreadsheet's gonna be fantastic for those that are just wanting basic entertainment, social media. I think this is gonna be a really awesome device for the AI curious people out there. I think the biggest challenge from my perspective is broadening their horizons and getting them to understand that AI is not here to take our jobs. If you do not utilize the right prompts, if you're not using the right information to give the AI everything it needs to to give you the results, it's gonna be pretty crap. So ultimately using ChatGPT, for instance, you can't just say, give me an Excel spreadsheet. It's not gonna be helpful. You've gotta be as specific as possible. AI is not here to take our jobs. It's here to make our lives a hell of a lot easier. You've got different AI initiatives, for instance, on this guy here, you have AI noise cancelling through Poly Studio. And if it can block out Linda Belcher's voice, I think it can do like basically anything. So the cafe users, those that are working on the train, live your best. It's been a pleasure. Thanks so much. <laughs> Nailed it.